What's your favorite kind of celebration? Maybe it's a pool party to celebrate the end of school? Woo! Or you might be counting down to your birthday bash. Happy birthday to me. And of course, there's always Valentine's Day. And everyone's favorite, Christmas. These are all fantastic times for celebration. But do you know who loves a party most of all? God. That's right. When God gave the Israelites laws to keep them safe, God also set aside special times for joyful celebration. It's great to celebrate big things, but we can find joy in everyday moments too. You can celebrate kicking a soccer goal. Goal! You can celebrate that you and your sister made it through the entire day without fighting. Seriously, I bet your mom would break out the ice cream to celebrate that. You can celebrate that you were brave enough to speak up and ask the teacher for help. And you can even celebrate if you got a good night's sleep. When you choose to see and celebrate what God is doing, others can see God at work in you. So let everyone know, it's time to celebrate, it's time to get it started, the party's happening here. It's time to say that joy is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Party people, where you at? Uh. It's time to celebrate. It's time to get it started. The party's happening here. That's right. I turn up the music loud. We got a reason to cheer Let's go Cause Jesus your love is for everyone We're gonna shine your light Shine your light today So come on clap your hands And everybody dance The party is popping Nobody's stopping We're gonna do it right And have a good time All for you Jesus talking about joy. Well, we take a look at the story of someone who put it all on the line to find something that was lost. <sighs> Whew. 
almost lost my breath. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about joy. <laughs> Which is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. God. Yes! Woo. Woo. I got it! No! What are you doing? I caught it? You're not supposed to catch it! But I thought we were- Haven't you ever played Keep the Uppy? Apparently not in the big leagues! <sighs> You're supposed to keep it going. Okay, okay. But you wanna know what would be even more fun? Keeping all of these balloons in the air all at once? Are you saying you can't handle it? I am the balloon maestro. I have so got this. All right. Ready? Mm-hmm. Three, two, one. <laughs> Running out of air. There's got to be a better way. Yeah. We let science do it for us. Let's make it. So how does this work? We're using vinegar and baking soda to inflate our balloons. I'm definitely missing some steps here. Step one, pour vinegar into each of the bottles. How much? That's the catch. I don't actually know how much it will take. Okay, the plot thickens. We're gonna try a different amount of vinegar in each bottle. Consider it done. What about the baking soda? Okay, let's do one tablespoon, three tablespoons, and however many tablespoons will fill up the last bowl. All right. Uh, uh, uh. What? <laughs> the soda has to go in the balloons. Oh. <laughs> it helps to stretch the balloon out a little bit first. So we got one tablespoon in this one, we have three in this one, and about four in that one. Bingo. What now? Step three, stretch the balloons over the mouth of the bottle, but make sure the baking soda doesn't fall in yet. All right. <sighs> this is a lot of work for a shortcut. But we're almost there. Step four. Lift up the balloons and allow the baking soda to drop into the bottle. You first, go. Wait, stop, stop, stop. First, safety gear. All right, are you ready for the first one? Yes, let's do it. All right, can I get a countdown? Three, two, one. Oh, oh whoa. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh, oh. So that one worked. Yeah. I'm at a loss for words. That was cool. That was very cool. Should we do the next one? Let's do it. You can do this one. All right. Three, two, hold one. Top. Hold the top. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Whoa. Look at that. That's awesome. You can see it inside the balloon. That's so cool. This one's a lot bigger than the other one. Yeah. Whoa, this feels weird. That looks like it's about a pop. It does. I hope it doesn't. Okay, next one. Yes, hold this okay. one. I'll go get the next one. Okay, this Wait. one is going to be big. Are you ready for this? Yes. Ready? Okay. One, one two, two, three. three. Oh, boy. oh, boy. Oh, oh, it's growing fast. It's growing fast. It's rumbling. <laughs> it's getting really big. I'm scared it's going to pop. I don't think it will. Ah! Oh no! Oh. Oh. oh! That was Whoa. awesome! Whoa! It's like a volcano in that balloon. Clearly, you can use too much vinegar. Or not enough. Let's see that one more time. Better tie that one off. Yeah, because it's time for... The Story 
before the story. Today, we're in Luke, the third book of the New Testament. Luke, a doctor, wrote about the life and ministry of Jesus. He recorded how Jesus loved and cared for everyone, young and old, sick and healthy, powerful and not so powerful. And when Jesus spoke to people, he often used parables. A parable is a fancy word for a story that uses everyday objects and situations to explain something about God's kingdom. Everyone gathered to listen, including outcasts like tax collectors and people who had done wrong things. The religious leaders did not like that Jesus was hanging out with these people. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. Jesus talked with everyone, and I mean everyone. It didn't matter if others thought you were a troublemaker or broke all the rules. Jesus would never avoid or overlook you. And this upset the religious leaders. He's just talking with those, those people like it's no big deal. I hear he actually eats with tax collectors and riffraff. Ew. Ugh. Doesn't Jesus get all the terrible things they've done? The religious leaders were horrified that Jesus would hang out with people who had done wrong things. Jesus knew exactly what they were saying, so he told them a story. Suppose one of you has 100 sheep and loses one of them. The parable Jesus told went something like this, starting with the shepherd gathering in his flock for the night. Move along there, Franny. Sweet pea, um, Edelweiss. Jesus did not actually name the sheep, but hey, naming sheep is fun. 97, 98, 99, that's one short. Where's Willis? Willis! The shepherd quickly realized that one of his sheep was missing. He's all alone. I have to go find him. Now, you have to understand this about sheep. They are not smart. They get distracted and wander away. Without a shepherd, a sheep is completely helpless. They can't defend themselves against wild animals. If they fall over, they can't even get back up on their own. Yeah, I've been there. So alone at night in the wilderness, the sheep was pretty much toast. The shepherd scrambled over rough and rocky ground in the failing light. He knew his sheep would not survive without him. Willis? Willis? I'm coming. At last, the shepherd heard what his ears had been straining for. I've got you. You're OK. The shepherd picked up that sheep and carried it all the way home. His lost sheep was rescued. The shepherd was so filled with joy that he invited all his friends and neighbors to come celebrate. Be joyful with me. I have found my lost sheep. Jesus finished by making the meaning of his story completely clear to the religious leaders. I tell you, it will be the same in heaven. There will be great joy when one sinner turns away from sin. The religious leaders were shook. I mean, they had built their lives around staying away from outcasts and people who did wrong things. But Jesus was saying that God loves those people. God goes to great lengths to find them and rescue them, just like that lost sheep. We can look at Jesus' story in two different ways. First of all, we are all like lost sheep sometimes. We try to do things on our own and end up lost and tangled up. Now, you might feel like you've made a lot of wrong choices, or you might feel like you're a pretty okay person. It doesn't matter. All of us have done things to break our relationship with God and with other people. That's called sin, and you can't fix it on your own. You're just like the sheep. But even in your most difficult moments, you can have confidence that Jesus will come for you and walk with you through every hard thing. And that can bring incredible, overflowing joy. <laughs> but in this story, we're not just the sheep. Sometimes we're like the shepherd's friends. When the sheep was rescued, the shepherd called them all to come and celebrate. When we look around us, we can see so many amazing ways that God is at work in the world. We're invited to celebrate these things and be joyful. 
In fact, joy is a direct gift from God. In Paul's letter to the Galatians, we read, but the fruit the Holy Spirit produces is love, joy, and peace. When Jesus rescues us, we choose to follow him. God sends the Holy Spirit to live in us. God's Spirit brings us joy in our own rescue and the rescue stories we see around us. And that is the end. I like to think I'm a pretty smart guy, but I guess I'm more sheepish than I know. Yeah, it's so easy to get distracted and wander. Thankfully, our shepherd doesn't get angry when that happens. <laughs> so, what's, what's our, our part, part in this story? story? Well, the beautiful thing is that there is no mess or trouble we can get into that's too deep or too awful for Jesus. Call out his name and he is there. That is such a good reason for joy. <laughs> exactly. We can find joy in thanking Jesus for the times that he's rescued us and for the times he will rescue us again. If you've never told Jesus you want to follow him, for him to be like your shepherd, you can talk to your grown up or a small group leader about it. We can also look for the ways that God is at work around us and celebrate those things. Take a look at the lives of your family and friends. Or where God is at work in the lives of people all around the world. God is making rescues big and small every single day, even if it's simply giving you peace during a stressful test. So every day is a good day to celebrate. Cue the confetti. <laughs> Party on! And see you next time. Bye. Bye. So here's the thing, we can have joy because of Jesus. Which means it's time for a celebration. Yikes, looks like I've lost my touch. Wait a minute. This balloon is filled with carbon dioxide instead of oxygen. Which makes it heavier than oxygen. Oh, so it won't stay up. I guess we're back to lung power. Or we could just use this. Have you had this all along? I kind of forgot it was there. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next time. time. Let's just try it out. <laughs>